Hey guys, it's The Realize here again. We have another deck profile, but this time it's going to be something new that just came out of the new pack, Advent of the Demon King. Um, we're going to be talking about the new ruler that a lot of people are actually realizing is pretty good. Um, we have Au, the new Were Rabbit ruler that's a deck filled of one ofs, and our teammate Dennis went to the 2K in New York also today. Um, my bad, yesterday. And he came, I believe, in what? It was two days ago. It was on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. All right, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Last weekend, he came in third, and he it was placed exactly after Swiss third, or? Uh, I mean, I made top four and then lost to okay. uh, Alex Blandon. Um, I mean, the mirror we match. Made the same, we made the deck together before we went up there, so it was someone was going to win. Regardless, the deck did better. well, and uh, we're going to see what is going on with this deck and why it's performing so well, and he's going to show us what the deck is made out of. So, let's get to it. Alright guys, so the ruler of this deck is AU. Uh, she is a blue ruler, starts with blue energize, flips for two mana. Um, at the beginning of the game, you get to start with an extra card, and you can only play one copy of each card in your deck. Um, that does not apply to the stone deck, thank goodness. Um, when you flip her, she is a thousand thousand imperishable. Um, when she hits the field, you can search the deck for any soul resonator and add it to your hand. And by discarding a soul resonator, you can give her a 500 500 uh, boost, and she gains flying and first strike. The last effect is her god's art, and that is just a zero cost. You can call a card by name, and then remove cards off the top of your deck until you hit that card. Um, that can benefit and harm you. Um, at the event, I had milled out in one of my games. Thankfully, I still got the match, but sometimes it just kind of... Have you ever actually decked out because of her ability? Just once, oh. and it was not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Still sounds ridiculous. Let's, um, go. let's, let's so, go. So, these cards are the most important ones to have in your starting hand. Um, I recommend, in this build you would hard mull because it's just aggressive. Um, you kind of just go in for that OTK. Um, I mean on a good hand you can still do 4k on turn 3. Um, the first card is uh, I use special power medicine. Um, it's just a one mana addition. Um, it gives the ruler plus two plus two, and if you're using AU, uh, you get the top stone of your stone deck onto the field. Um, after that is just the soul resonators. Um, the only ones that really matter are the two over here. Uh, it would be the Misty Dragon Spirit and the Willful Samurai Spirit. When you discard the Misty Dragon, um, it gives any resonator flying, um, which can help for a final push. It's also a very good resonator because it can remove itself from the game in response to being targeted and then come back at the end of the turn. And by playing AU, you can also boost its attack and defense by paying one of any color. That's, that's really strong. Holy crap. <clears throat> the other good one is Wolf Samurai Spirit. When you discard him, it gives your ruler pierce. Uh, there is no card that gets rid of Pierce in this game. No zero, like zero gets rid of all things except for Pierce. Um, this is like, that's how you get in your damage. If you can boost her well beyond any blocker, it'll just do it and you'll win. Okay. So, and the rest are just for racking up I, damage? I do not play any of these. Like, actually play them onto the field. Um, maybe Misty, because it's just that good. Um, the rest are kind of just discard fodder. Okay. Um, and then the last card that you would want in your hand would be Sprinting Flame Horse. Um, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, the best inheritance in the game. Ideal hand for flipping would be four spirits and or Sprinting Flame Horse and three mana. You can flip, search out a soul, and then God's Art for the Sprinting Flame Horse, and you can deal 3,700 damage. And it usually ends the game right there, especially if your opponent pays for the Shock Stones. That's true. That's it's very deadly. It's pretty consistent too. I it's. Mean. I mean, you need 
Six out of eight. <laughs> uh, the next cards that I had in here um, were just kind of boost spells. Um, there's Elixir's Fighting Spirit, which is just plus four to attack and first strike. It has Remnant. Um, then there's also Rapid Growth, which is plus four, plus four, and Remnant. Uh, you also did Dreams of Flight, because I feel like just the flying in general helps to get that extra push, especially if you can't OTK them. Um, and then a Remnant Boost spell is always beneficial. Uh, Winds of Vitality is just a plus six, plus six for one. Um, again, just a boost spell to keep that push. And then Spider's Web, which I treated it as a, as a boost spell, mainly because you can grab a Soul Resonator from your grave and then discard it again. Uh, or you can force your opponent to attack with a Resonator that would be a decent blocker, and then they lose the ability to defend themselves. Um, after that, we just have a standard burn package. Obviously, you can only play one of, so I just played all burn spells that I could that cost two or less. Uh, next is just control cards. Um, there's other world dreams that if you're not familiar with that, it counters a spell for one, and then your opponent can play another card that costs the same. Uh, if they don't have it, then they can't play anything else, and it's just a free counter. Um, Severing Winds, Fear Spell. I feel everyone's pretty familiar with those. Um, and then there's Destruction, which is I use Sword Strike. It's a one mana quick cast. It reveals the top five cards of your deck and then destroys the Resonator. Um, you'll never whiff on it because you can only play one copy of a card. Uh, the benefit to this is when you look at those top five cards, you can rearrange them. And you can ensure that you're not going to deck yourself out if you gods art for any of those cards. Or any other card, because you'll at least have five left. Um, so it's it's pretty good if you can play it before you flip. It's just, I just think it's a great card in general, I, I feel like. Yeah, it gets decks the job that don't done. play too many four ofs can... <laughs> you could, drop destroy I mean, you, stuff. you can get greedy in other decks, I suppose, you <laughs> can play it, but it, it's hit or miss. Uh, after that is just kind of destruction. you got heteroclete. Uh, this new card, uh, True Blade of the Spirits, it just deals 500 damage to a 2 cost Resonator, or less. It's a Remnant. It's pretty efficient removal, mainly because all your problems are going to be in the first three turns, and if you can keep the board clear, then you're good. Um, Final Battle. Again, it's kind of like one of those things that you just use it for a push. It wipes the board and just gets you in there for damage. Um... Shayla's Return, same thing. It bounces a card that costs four or less, quick cast. You're not going to be dealing with much after turn three anyway. Um, on top of that, if you go into like a grindy game with a Fox deck, you can bounce uh, Kitsune King back to the hand in response to them trying to make a Manticore so that they don't get the stone. Um, so you'd set them back. Then the last one. That kind of goes into the control category, would be Amaterasu's Foresight. Uh, it helps you survive against the mirror, and just getting your opponent to make a push when they can't do any damage, so that it opens them up. Next is some aggro cards. Um, Sylvia stops your opponent from being able to block with one of their cards. It's also good in the mirror, because if you can stop their AU from boosting and blocking at all, then you're going to get in there for damage. Um, Freyla, which I find that she's actually really good, because this card, this deck doesn't really play many Resonators, so for you to play her and give her Swiftness, it's just another early damage card. Um, same thing with Red Riding Hood, just kind of a turn three Swiftness if the game goes longer than that, she can just get in there. And then Mad Boar, because it's a lot of pressure he's to... fast. <laughs> he has first strike and swiftness, and he's a 7-3. It's, it's just not fun to deal with if you don't have the right solutions. Hmm. <laughs> After that, I have draw power cards. Um, just playing like Divine Bird, Tama... Uh, I found Traveling Trader to be pretty useful, especially with all the Remnant cards. 
Um, you just draw a card and then discard. And he's a 3-4, so he's a decent 1-drop. Um, then there's Summon from Memoria. This card's great because you can look at the top three, pick a card, add that soul that you need, and then when you put two cards on the bottom, you know what they are, and your God's Art is that much more efficient. Or safe. And then Spinning Aquasol. It kind of goes into any of those categories. It just grabs any spell. You can use it for burn or control, whatever you need at the time. Okay. Plus, if you have that extra mana before you draw a step, you can just draw that extra card. The last is, like, ramp. Um, Power Medicine kind of goes into this category, too. Uh, the Pig is a 4-3 for 1 that you can tap that third stone and then swing. If they don't block it, you get that extra 400. And if they do try to block it, you just sacrifice it and then flip A you for... I mean, <laughs> it's, more or less, it's more or less ramp in that aspect because you're still able to cheat that third stone and flip at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got Sacred Elf and Melfi. Melfi has that damage prevention for the mirror and both of them ramp and get you to that three mana that you need to win. Mm -hmm. um, what about your stones? Stone deck is pretty simple. Uh, it's just two blasting waves, two deep wood, and two hearth score. And then the four of is her stone, which is the possession stone. Uh, if you're using AU, you get all five colors. So There's your rainbow, folks. This is 100% a four of in your stone deck. No bad side if you're playing this deck. Just rainbow. Got your rules memorial right there. Um, um, I chose to do green, red, blue mm -hmm. over using black and white because the very few cards that aren't in those colors um, I probably wouldn't end up using until later on. Um, and I don't really find myself bricking on like Heteroclete or otherwise. And I could just tra uh, Traveling Trader it away if it's really that bad. For the sideboard? And then for the sideboard, I have basic addition removal. Uh, Destruction of the Portal is a new spell. Um, it's just a two mana remnant quick cast that destroys an addition. Okay. That's pretty useful. It's reusable, discardable. Gets rid of any additions that would be an issue. Then I got a discard package. I have Unending Hatred, uh, Scorn of Dark Alice, and an Aimless Mist. Um, these just kind of get rid of the cards that would be an issue, as well as in the mirror, um, because ripping the souls out of their hands keeps you from dying in three turns. <laughs> Note to self, people, if you're playing a darkness deck, focus on discards against this deck. It yeah, will, discard. It will, it will help. It will help you last a little longer. Discards and foresights <laughs> will definitely help. Um, next would just be more control. We got final breeze, millennia bond, and Keys' call. Um, I don't control decks. Just to, it keeps the keeps you from dying. It keeps you from losing your ruler. Keeps you from. I feel like you're going to be siding more against... It's just all an anti-side, so when people side against you, you're more prepared for them, for their side. Pretty much. Yours. You're just kind of anticipating what's going to happen yeah. next on their end. Um, so for the mirror, two of these cards kind of stand out to me. Or three of them actually do. Um, there's one and only, and this card pretty much destroys any additional resonator that shares a name. Um, so that means if you or your opponent have a card, or your opponent has two cards that have the same name, all those cards get destroyed. Um, what makes it particularly good in the mirror is if you're both flipped, you could make a swing and then play this card and it blows them both up. And because she has imperishable, it, you, I mean, you just flip again. Um, the pair for this is Burn to Cinders. You can get rid of their imperishable, and if you don't have burn cards to really finish over off, um, and if they have the souls to boost, you can just do this, and it's a quick and easy kill, and they can't flip back, and then their deck pretty much just shuts down after that. Um, and then the last card that's kind of, it works against Tree and in the, mi uh, the mirror, which is Valentina. Um, so because they use that god art, if they have a real unlucky chance, and they mill out most of their deck, 
That just means she has swiftness and she gets a big buff. Um, so, I mean, that could be another final push if you lose your ruler or just have four mana because of any other ramp. Next, we got some fox control, which is just Dawn of the Earth to prevent that Manticore or uh, Emit from showing up when you don't want it to. Cherto prevents life gain, uh, keeps them well within kill range, and then if anything dies, both players lose 100 life, which you don't really care about your life total because you're winning in three turns. Um, and then we have two removal spells, and it's just Gale Force and then Sealing the Gates of Darkness, which is a new card that just destroys the Darkness Resonator for one white. Savior of Splendor, folks, came back. Same thing, same cost, same effect. Doesn't have Jesus. No Jesus on this one. No. <laughs> now it's Panda. Did that one cost two? Nope. There was one. It's the one. same exact card. Chan Instant. Um, and then the last one, I just ended up putting in Shackles of Ice. Um, it shuts down Gil, like Green Gil, um, and then Gil Alhamat, because obviously he can't use his mana abilities anymore. Um, doesn't matter if Shackles is on the field, because you don't have any ruler abilities, and it just slows him down that much more. And that would be it. And on the inside. Do you think... So... Looking at your side deck, it seems like you guys have the biggest problem with a Fox deck. Um, Fox was definitely one of my tougher matchups. Um, what I learned was to just flip real aggressively, even if you don't have the souls for it, and just keep making hits. Okay. Um, it just it forces them to make plays that they don't really want to, and they don't want to make any Chimeras before they get Kitsune King on the field. So beat that turn four, put the pressure on, make them waste stones. And do you think the surprise factor was just part of the huge, you know... I don't believe that it was. Um, very A lot of the better players, or a lot of the players that do their research, uh, knew about it because of the Spain GP. That's how we learned about it. Um, and even the night before, uh, the Florida GP... Um, I forget the name of the person, I apologize... Uh, the person who had topped was playing a as far as and I he got first, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like it's definitely it's definitely a problem deck, but at the same time, I feel like it can be countered because of the factor that it is a one of deck, and there are a lot of cards right now that can deal with her mechanic. Um, I mean, it, even in like a deck against like zero. For example, that gets rid of the swiftness or any other abilities, um, except for Pierce. Um, if you swing into a zero with a big boost from spells or souls, um, she's only preventing eleven of it. The rest th still goes through, even though she doesn't die. Um, so to, to just that make damage those... is directed at the player. Yeah. So the way Pierce works is it deals the damage that would be lethal, which would be eleven in that case, and then the rest goes to the original target. Okay. Um, so if anyone's familiar with magic, it's kind of the same as, as the trample on fog bank. But. So how do, how do you see this for the future of the meta? Um, I feel like for what's out right now, I don't think much can really stop it. Um, sure, you can make a deck that's made to beat it, but I don't think that deck would have good time against anything else. Okay. So we have some unpredicted, uh, you know, scares, but, you know, Potentially, this is going to be a problem deck, in my opinion, but I feel like we're still too early to completely tell if it's going to take it over take over the meta, but um, I would like to thank Dennis for explaining how the deck works and uh, yeah, no the decisions problem. made for it. Hopefully, um, this deck does continue to do well for a little bit, but hopefully we can find some answers uh, in the future, and I would like you guys to continue to stay tuned and subscribe to our channel for more content and uh, Force of Will videos coming and with that ado well just as a uh, as a disclaimer this list is updated since my uh, my adventures in New York uh, a couple of cards were swapped out if you guys have seen my list 
posted on Facebook. Um, I just felt like the changes that I had made uh, were just better off in certain matchups. Yeah, so it's slightly updated, but not too much. All right. Well, stay tuned for more content. Thanks, guys. See you. Chill out.